Well, hello, Rainbow Nursery. It's Stephen back here with another Bible story. And we're carrying on the story we began last week of Moses. Do you remember hearing last time about Moses being born when he was a little baby and that nasty king of Egypt wanting to get rid of him? Well, that didn't happen, did it? And it didn't happen because God used those brave women, and one of them was Moses' big sister Miriam, God used those brave women to do the right thing. Weren't they totally fab? Well, today we're hearing the story of how God used Moses once he was a grown up to rescue the people of Israel from being slaves in Egypt. The people of Israel were being really badly treated in Egypt, weren't they? They were having to work way too hard and they weren't allowed to stop, but God was going to rescue them. A rescue is when someone takes someone else away from something bad. So here is a fire engine with firefighters on it. And that comes to rescue people when a building is on fire and to take them to a safe place. And here is an ambulance. An ambulance with paramedics on it. That comes to rescue people when they're ill or when they've had an accident, and to take them to hospital to make them better. And here is a lifeboat. A lifeboat comes when people are in trouble on rocks near the seaside, and it comes to take them to a safe place instead. And in our story today, we see God, through Moses, doing a really big rescue. Taking the people of Israel out of Egypt, and all of the bad things that were happening to them there and taking them away to a safe place instead. So let's hear the story. So Moses, the baby, well, he grew older and eventually he went to live with the princess who'd found him all those years before by the river. Do you remember that? She found him in the basket, didn't she? As Moses grew up, though, he got upset with the way that the Egyptians were treating the people of Israel. And because he got angry about that and he did a bad thing, he had to run away from Egypt and he had to go away and live in a faraway place called Midian. And Moses lived there for a long time and he met someone and got married to them. He got married to a girl called Zipporah. But meanwhile, back in Egypt, things were still bad for the people of Israel. They were being so badly treated, they had to work and work and work, and they weren't allowed to stop, and eventually they called out to God to help them. Now, do you remember those special promises that God made to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob? Well, God remembered those promises that he made, and he decided that he was going to help rescue the people of Israel. And that started by God talking to Moses, Moses was far away in Midian and he was a shepherd looking after sheep. And one day he was out with the sheep when he saw a burning bush. That's a bush that was on fire, but the strange thing was that the fire wasn't burning up the bush and making it go away. And then Moses heard a voice and it was God's voice. And God said, Moses, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And I'm going to rescue the people of Israel from Egypt. I'm going to take them away from that bad place. And I'm going to give them a land of their own. And Moses, God said, you're going to be the person that I'm going to use to do this. You're going to go back to Egypt and you're going to tell the king of Egypt to let my people go. And Moses was really scared. How can I do that? He thought the king will be really angry with me and do nasty things to me. But God said, Moses, I will be with you. And so Moses was very brave, like those girls have been in the story last week. And he travelled back to Egypt and he went to see the king and he said to the king, you've got to let my people go. That's what God wants you to do. But the king of Egypt, he wouldn't listen. No, I don't want to let the people go, he said to Moses. And so God well, God sent lots of bad things upon Egypt so that the king would change his mind. 
So first the river Nile, which was the biggest river in Egypt, that had water in it, but God turned that water to blood. How horrible! But still, the king wouldn't let the people of Israel go. And then next, God sent loads of frogs that were everywhere. Frogs were all over the place. They were in people's houses, they were in people's beds, they were everywhere. How horrible! But still, the king of Egypt wouldn't let the people of Israel go. And then there were loads of gnats, horrible things, and then there were loads of flies. And it was really, really horrible. But still, the king of Egypt wouldn't let the people of Israel go. And then lots of animals died. And after that, there were nasty boils that appeared on people's skin and all over their face and over their body. It was really, really horrible. And then there was lots of hail falling from the sky. But still, the king of Egypt wouldn't let the people of Israel go. And then there were lots of locusts. Locusts are really big insects that eat all of the food in the fields and take it all away. And it was horrible. And then there was loads of darkness covering the whole land. But still, the king of Egypt refused to let the people of Israel go. And then finally, God took away all of the eldest boys of the Egyptians. And it was really sad. And this time, the king of Egypt decided that he would let the people of Israel go. And so they did. They'd been in slavery for years and years and years. But now God, through Moses, was going to change that and take them to the special land that God had promised them. And the wonderful thing was that God didn't just rescue them. God went with them. God went with them to guide them. In the daytime, we're told he led them by a pillar of cloud where they could see that God was with them. And at night time, he led them by a pillar of fire. But you know, the most amazing bit of this story was still to happen. The people of Israel hadn't gone far when the nasty king of Egypt, he changed his mind. I don't want them to go after all, he said. Let's chase after them and let's get them back. And so the king set off with his army, with his chariots, and they chased after the Israelites. And as they got closer, the people of Israel became more and more scared because the Egyptians were catching them up and they had a great big sea in front of them, which they thought they wouldn't be able to cross in time. And as the king of Egypt got closer, God did an amazing thing. God drove back the sea to make a path through that sea for the people of Israel and for Moses to lead them from danger to safety. The sea opened up and the people of Israel crossed over and they got to the other side and they were safe. And the king of Egypt and his army, when they tried to follow them, God made the sea close up and it washed the nasty king's army completely away. And God told the people of Israel, Never forget what I've done for you. Never forget how I rescued you. And that will help you to know that I will always be a rescuer God. And that's what the story shows us. Fire engines are great at rescuing us, aren't they? Ambulances are great at rescuing us. And lifeboats are great at rescuing us. But the biggest rescue of all is God rescuing his people. People like you and people like me because God loves us. And the thing that God always wants us to remember is that he is a God who loves us and wants to rescue us. So we're going to hear more about Moses next week, but I think we ought to say a prayer. Dear God, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you rescue us. Amen. Well, it's brilliant to be with you, Rainbow Nursery. I really enjoy telling these stories to you. And for now, I'll say bye.